Hello, everybody. My name is Al DePaulo. I'm the Partner Products Manager over here at Bobcat. And today I wanted to take a look at uh, machining with your rotary axis on a uh, CNC mill or possibly a router where you want to do some statue work. So the first thing you need to do is draw your model or import your model. In this case, I uh, downloaded a file off of GrabCAD. And uh, this is going to be the model that I'm going to work with. It looks like an a Oscar, Oscar model. So I want to align the model with my uh, rotary axis. So I'm going to rotate this geometry um, 90 degrees in Z. So I get it running parallel with my X, which uh, in this example, that's going to be my rotary axis. All right, from here, what I want to do is set up my stock. So I'm going to create a new job. This is going to be, I'm going to just use the BC4 axis mill and I'll run my stock wizard. Uh, I'm going to use rectangular stock and the software is going to populate a minimum maximum box around the part. I'm going to make some adjustments with this. Um, I'm going to add a quarter inch on every side. Uh, you're going to need to have some kind of uh, clamping device um, on this part okay so and at this point I'm not too not too concerned with that um, all right the next thing that I want to do is uh, I want to advance to this screen and at this point I'm going to save the file so I'm going to do file save as and we'll save it uh, once I save the file, I'm going to close the file, and then I'm going to open it back up. The reason why I do that is um, when you save the model, uh, when you go to pick the origin, you get all your snap points, and these are uh, actually very uh, useful tools as far as uh, aligning your geometry with your world zero, and um, also to be used to set up your uh, index system. So I'm going to create a new layer, and I'll, I'm going to select all of the yellow geometry and then I'm going to move it over to its own layer so you can see we have the solid on one layer and nothing on its own layer uh, from here I'm gonna translate everything and I'm gonna move uh, this zero that geometry to the zero position and then I just want to run the stock wizard again Okay, so now from here, what I want to do is set my zero, and I'm going to set my zero at the top of the stock here, and then I'm going to choose OK. All right, so now we have the uh, zero set up, we have the stock set up, and we have our model set up. Uh, the next thing that I want to do is create some index systems. So I'm going to right click, add uh, new UCS, three points. We're going to do one two, three. That's going to be our first index system. We're going to right click, rename uh, number one. Okay. And then uh, from there, we're going to want to rotate the part and we're going to want to cut on the bottom. So we're going to uh, use a, another uh, index system. So one, two, three. That gives us number two. We're going to rename number two. Okay, great. So we have uh, both our uh, coordinate systems for our index. Go back to our top view. We'll get into the cam tree. We're going to right click on our machine setup and we're going to go add index. Then we'll right click on our index system, reselect, and we're going to grab number one. Okay. Now from here, we're going to uh, load in a cutting strategy, but what I want to do is I want to measure between here and here to find what the center of the part is, and this is 1.3257. So now I'm going to load in a three axis routine. I'm going to select all of my geometry here. Uh, I'm going to load in my machining strategy. I'm going to use the advanced rough in this example. I'm going to set my uh, tool size. We're going to use uh, adaptive roughing, zigzag, uh, set our step down, step over, uh, intermediate steps, stock for finish, and our overall machining strategy or uh, tolerance. From here, I'm going to just adjust a couple more settings. And uh, 
all of this looks pretty good. I do want to come down to my parameters, user defined, bottom of job, and I measured this over here before, so we're going to make this minus 1.4, and then we'll go ahead and compute. And what this will do is generate our roughing routine from the top down. Uh, then from there, you know, and of course you could adjust your step over and step down and other settings that you may want to use. Uh, the next thing that I want to do is um, uh, rotate the part 180 degrees and then repeat the roughing uh, routine again. Uh, so this way we can rough out the other side. So we're going to flip the part over here. Uh, from here we're going to add a new index system we're going to reselect this is going to be index number two now we already set up this routine which we're going to say we're happy with so we'll right click copy right click paste and then all we need to do is reselect our geometry and then we need to uh, recompute our toolpath and that will generate our roughing routine on the bottom now again when you're dealing with this scenario, you're going to need to hold it. Uh, right now, I'm just uh, uh, you know taking the model as it is and then generating toolpath on it. Um, depending on how I'm going to set up the part, I probably would draw uh, a cylinder or something to extend past the head and ex extend past the base so I have something to hold on to, and I'll cut that off later. But uh, for this example, this this will do good showing the roughing and the uh, the roughing of the routine. The next thing that I want to look at is. Uh, going back to my uh, first index system and I'm going to load a uh, four axis rotary tool path. I'm going to select all of my geometry here and then I'm going to um, load in a ball mill and then I'm going to set the corner radius for the ball mill that I'm going to run on. Um, we're going to run, I eh, will say a long, you can run a long, you can run around my uh, base point I do need to adjust this is going to be minus 1.3257 because I zeroed on the top of the block I need to adjust the difference uh, from my origin of the job to the center line of my rotary tool path so this all looks good I'm going to just uh, drop down my tolerance and then I'll go ahead and uh, compute this and this will generate our rotary tool path so we did a roughing on the top, a roughing on the bottom, and now we're doing a rotary tool path to run around the part. Um, I, in, I think in this case I'm running down the length of the part, but you could run around the part as well. And these are the basic steps that you would use to uh, rough out a statue uh, with a uh, three-axis tool path and then to semi-finish or finish the statue with your uh, rotary tool path. So, a uh, quick lesson, we'll end the, we'll end the, the video with a, a simulation of what we've done, and if there's any questions, you can always uh, come back, uh, comment in the, the thread or the Facebook or the YouTube page. Thank you so much, guys.